Alrighty then, it's time for a Jungle Zack game, and I know I say this a lot, but this one is a doozy. Which one? And, you know, I'm playing Urin Zack because, you know, yellow and you know what I mean? Which two? But, you know, just, it's funny, laugh at it, please. Anyways, I have a Yasuo, so you know how this game is gonna go in the early game, so, yeah. Anyways, I picked Zack not as a counter to anybody specifically, but as sort of, you know, just a neutral pick. I mentioned before, he's pretty neutral pick. And against a lot of aggressive junglers like Lee Sin, he's really resistant, so Lee Sin really can't do anything to punish me. And I can't really do anything to him, except, you know, survive. Lee Sin can't kill Zack enough, I mean, Zack fast enough to actually do anything, so you kind of walk away from him mostly, and he can't, and you're like moderately sped, sped up, so he can't really do anything. Lee Sin, in fact, is going to showcase this by trying to kill me right here. Even he, when he gangs up on me along, say, the Victor, they can't do damage fast enough to, you know, bring me down. So I CC them down, do quite a bit of damage because I have red buff and I'm just spamming my W. Enough that Lee Sin gets brought down and eventually Victor too because me and Ye also double team him. Gangplank teleported in, so he's going to try to finish me off, but I'm drinking my little urine bubbles and I managed to survive long enough to deal quite a bit of damage to him. Eventually my passive blows up, but, you know, that's my passive. He guns down Ye also and then desperately tries to finish Finish me off, but you know, you can see it coming. He's just like, no, no, please. He gets finished off. He hesitated way too much and got punished for that. He could have come close to finishing me off, or if he played his barrels a lot better, you know, taking into account my passive, he would have easily killed me. But now nah, he screwed that up. So that early game shenanigans, three kills for one, is incredible, and it showcased it just by. Basically, Lisa not understanding the matchup, that he can't kill Zack fast enough because I'm a huge health bubble and I'm pretty resistant. By the way, gank Lulu, use my Q to put her together, and then eventually she just, you know, can't walk away from a red buff Zack. You know, it's kind of a, a, a thing that I want to emphasize. Red buff isn't really that strong on a lot of champions because they're not auto attackers per se, but on someone with the sustained damage like a Mumu and Zack, it's pretty good because you can keep them down there and you just keep throwing out your Ws onto them and getting your cooldowns up and they can't really turn around to kill you. Either way, Yasuo kills a Lee Sin and then he gets poked by the Victor, so it's a one for one trade. Technically, it's better for the Victor because it doesn't matter if the Lee Sin is, you know, behind or anything because he's... He's just going to be here for the early game, late game, he's just something else. And take a, take into consideration Lee Sin's build. I, actually, I have to give him a lot of props. I think, for anything, he did understand his role in the game. Either way, Tristana got way too penis getting a little bit too ahead of herself. So very easily grab him together, pound him. I aimed for somebody other than the... And then the Tristana, because she was going to get gunned down anyways, and I want to make sure to, you know, sort of shepherd the uh, Lulu too. And same situation as before, the Lee Sin can't do enough damage to actually, you know, deal with me and I guess the Nami too. So Nami, if we got the kill for that, I probably should have gotten it. Though I probably shouldn't have gotten the kills on the other two, but you know, I'm greedy Zack. So yeah, so far, this game is pretty go going well for us, but you can tell by the video length that, you know, shenanigans, right? But yeah, Aftershock, like I mentioned in the Maokai video, is really good on champions like Zac. It just gives you such glorious little tiny bursts, and like, it, it's not, it, I know it gives you more than that, but it's pretty significant enough to you be able to, like, you know, keep, put that little oomph in your attacks. And again, my passive there actually had about two seconds to come up. It would have been ingloriously, incredibly glorious and then you know the gangplank keeps coming down mid because he got his ass wrecked early on sort of due to the miss uh, the misplays and it allowed Renekton to sort of bring back you know just having a lot of pressure onto him allowed Renekton to come back and they do a little lane swap but Victor kind of forgets the fact that top lane is not a safe place for him and I just use my Q bring him back together CC him you know that kind of thing he tries to run away, but at this point I have my passive, so I'm a brave boy, and I jump in and kill him. My passive isn't even blown up, so... At this point, the victor was actually raging in all chat, just kind of really frustrated at all the camping. But, like, much like Maokai, this is just a pure momentum-based kind of ganking right now. Because I don't rely on mana all too much, I'm rather well-sustained, and I'm just well-rounded, and I'm not really afraid of anybody on the enemy team matchup-wise, I can be really brave and reckless almost, also thanks to my passive too. You know, Lee Sin popped my, my passive, but of course you realize that it doesn't really matter because now all of them are pretty weak. I stick around in the fight, just sort of keeping out the outskirts, trying to provide my CC while Renekton goes in there and, you know, takes the brunt of the damage. But I stick around just in case my cooldowns come back and I can contribute something. Because this is something I see a lot of players do. You know, 
yes, you might die, but the value of the, that your crowd control, your poking can bring is tremendous. You know, I made a point of that in the last video as Maokai where in a certain fight, my Janna ran away. Like, he, she ran away during a little skirmish because, oh man, it was turning out pretty badly. But she could have, you know, she wasn't the target and they couldn't target her at all. So she could have hung up on the outskirts and thrown her shields and her little tornadoes and stuff and contributed, right? You know, even if you are weak, you can still do things. And that's going to be something I want to highlight in this game because, yeah, it's going to be a big deal. Either way, coming in there, I jump into the gangplank, use my Q to and then try to grab the victor, but the CC comes in. I use my ultimate not to try to displace anybody, but to discourage them from kicking my ass. Then the Lee Sin follows his heart, and you know, it, 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 he dies for that. Although he does kill somebody else, rather than his actual intended target. And then the enemy team sort of breaks loose. Like I said, look at my health. I know I don't have a passive, but my CC can still contribute something. So I hang around, wait for my chance to go in there, use my E, pop in there, finish off the gangplank, and then retreat. I survive with like three health or something. But because I became the target for a little while, because I also was there to contribute, making sure gangplank died before getting any more damage in, it also helped, you know, get a kill and make sure Yasuo would survive. Again. I know I could have died and it could have been just really bad, but the potential upswing of that, just, you know, absolutely wiping out the enemy team could be a huge, you know, could be totally worth it. Sometimes you got to play a little bit risk, especially in this game where, to be honest, both team compositions are rather middling. They have their weaknesses and they're going to have their times where we're going to both be very weak. In my case, my team's, you know, damage capabilities are going to start tapering off in the sense that all the enemy team needs to do is build AD, although we have the vein for the late game. The enemy team, on the other hand, just kind of has no actual way to initiate or control people in fights other than, you know, channeled abilities and slows. So they're going to be in a kind of a, in a hiffy fit later on in that kind of sense. So both teams' comps aren't all that good for the long run. But yeah, Yasuo got a little overzealous and so did I, thinking that maybe I could pick up the victor and instead I get killed alongside taking my passive. So that's a pretty big loss for me, especially since I'm quite ahead. My team composition also has, or I mean my team also has something good. My kill spread, a lot of it is focused on me, six kills and you know, that's pretty big. But you know, thankfully some of it is on Vayne, five kills and on Yasuo even though he's got some deaths. Ren Nekton right now is just kind of the piddly one. If anything, he'll work as a sort of meat shield and he's building damage, which whatever, I guess. On the enemy side, like I told you, the Lee Sin, I don't know if he was going for this type of a build, but he fell behind. He fell behind and he knew this game was going to drag on past a mid game, past where Lee Sin is effective. So his build is now reflecting what he needs to counter my team. That's what you do when you're behind as certain champions. It's actually really smart. And I don't know if he, was, if he was planning on this all along, but I have to give him credit for that. Because it's actually going to play a big deal, because now he, take, instead of taking this uh, role of being an assassin, being a murder machine, he ends up becoming this, you know, disruptor. He can jump in there, be, just pummel someone to death if they, he gets ignored, you know, control somebody, kick people, disperse. He becomes a, you know, a bruiser, a, a disruptive bruiser and really annoying character to deal with. But either way, though, for right now, my team is really ahead. This is where our awful composition isn't going to punish us too much. So as long as we push the momentum that we have right now, we'll be able to, you know, just kind of ignore the fact that we have a kind of shitty team composition. You know, I could also have built myself more AP to deal with that. You know, you know, bring that AP damage, even if my ratios aren't as amazing as before. And all, you know, but the problem is that I need to be able to survive because the Red Necton isn't really building tanky. And we need somebody to front line, somebody to at least disperse and control people and allow Vayne to do things. Lulu is also really good at protecting, so, I mean, I mean not Lulu, Nami is pretty good at protecting with her ultimate if she gets cast it properly. So that's good too. But right now, we're a little bit not focused on what we kind of should be doing. Like, I keep going in for the initiates and my teammates kind of scam scamper off. And we are kind of arguing at each other at this point in all chat because, you know, some people are having little roguish hearts. Still, though, to our benefit, we are just kind of a lot stronger, so we can do a lot of things. And I also got to give myself credit. My Qs have been on point, right? Like, this whole game. Either way, though, Hero Renekton makes kind of a mistake here. See, he got kicked by Lee Sin, so he knew he was going to get, you know, Karate Kid to the face, right? He should have backed off as soon as that Q hit, backed away from Lulu, so Lulu wouldn't be able to support Lee Sin in case he used his Q. 
And when Lee Sin jumps in, he could have maybe wrecked his face. Or at least discourage them from using his secondary on his Q anyways. You know, just pay attention to the, the man, or just pay attention and react to things. In this case, the enemy team gets a little overzealous. They chase way too far in, they clump up, which allows Yasuo to get an opportunity to just turn around and kill the Tristana. Which is really bad for the enemy team, because they thought they were going to get off this scot-free. Uh, I go in there, get the lease in, Q him alongside the... Uh, well, Q try to Q him, he kicks me away. Gangplank comes in, I back off, casting random his omen, try to slow him down. And then, you know, the sacrificing the Nami. Renekton comes in right now, saves my ass, or saves me from getting my ass killed with my uh, passive. And they desperately try to finish me off, but the Renekton is providing a huge distraction. I pop up, use my ultimate immediately to sort of just make them back off from me. Then, you know, just jump back in. Try to... Uh, the, the whole fact that Lisa wanted to kill me allows him to put himself in a bad position for Renekton to kill him. Although I think Renekton would have killed him anyways. So, that was a huge turnaround. And you mostly came from the enemy team getting way too greedy and desperate. But, kind of at this point, they kind of had to. But no, like I said, or at least I, I, I was showcasing. I, I kind of, uh, much like Maokai's ultimate... Give Zach's ultimate a little bit more credit. I found that you can use it with a uh, you can use it a little bit better. Also, as you know, a immediate dispersal when you jump in with your ultimate, you knock them up, and then you immediately you, I mean, you know you jump in with your E, and then you jump in uh, you knock them up a little bit, and then you use your ultimate to just spring them up back up too. It keeps them in place, and it, it, I I kind of like to say like if you hit hit your opponents with your E twice, it doesn't do very much that way. It just sort of keeps them in place, but it allowed me to make a little bit more cool plays. Just, I'll talk about it in a different video, but I want to showcase um, this nice little team fight. They flanked around to try to get the vein, but they put themselves again in a bad position in which they're in basically a corridor. So they have to choose me as a target where Renekton gets to just kind of pick a fight where they're all basically clumped up. This is just a really bad spot for them because I, me, I could just jump in there and run amok. They, if they focus me, you know, they're gonna lose. And in the meantime, Renekton just kind of gets to use his ultimate to his maximum effect, and they slowly get torn to shreds. They can't fight in a corridor. They need more space. They need to, you know, keep themselves from being clumped up. They need to be able to use Lulu, so Lulu's, you know, abilities to slow my team and drag us around and force us to separate. And they need to use Tristana's range to, a max, to an advantage. That, that spot just completely screwed them up. And, you know, we're able to get Baron because of that rather easily. It's just a really bad decision from the enemy team. And they did it again because they got super greedy. They thought, hey, we got a flank on the enemy vein. Let's just, you know, sta you know, slam into her. But, of course, that doesn't matter because we saw that coming and we have a lot of ways to close the gap. However, though, this video is 20 minutes or over 20 minutes. So, yeah. This next scene... Yeah, they're clumped up. We're trying to, you know, we have Baron. We get a little bit cocky. So we. Do, so my goal here is, again, to try to get the enemy Tristana and kill her. Because without her, the enemy team is definitely going to fall apart. Although the Lulu is going to make it difficult to do so. So I see here an opportunity to maybe get the victor, but I miss my E and my Q. They use our ultimate. My teammates clump up. And we get punished by the barrel. And then victor comes in and just destroys my teammates. And Lamy easily gets picked off, and that's bad. And then the, the rest of us sort of forced into a huge retreat. We got really weakened here. Now, I want to also showcase this. I split from the vein because if I kept going with her, it's a very good chance that my teammates would use me as a springboard to finish her off. So I try to survive as much as I can. Use, you know, the explosion, and then I flash over, and I survive. The Yasu, on the other hand, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. He kind of... He had every chance... To survive, I think he was trying to help me, but I wasn't going to die anytime soon, so he just kind of threw his life away. But now it's a you know a three v five, and I just want just just watch. You know, take unzip your pants, because beauty. They're clumped up. Going with my ultimate, I'm very quickly casted, and then I bring him to me. It just oh look, that's amazing. Hey, when that happened, I, I even I, even I couldn't believe myself. The enemy team. Forgot that I existed. And they clumped themselves up and got obliterated. However, though, I do want to point out a huge fact that I always put about Zack. Because a lot of people disregard something I told I tell them. That Zack is a good initiator, but he's not the best. Even though he's got a long-range slingshot, the thing is, it's technically a quasi-channel. I say quasi-channel because if you do it from a distance, they can't see it, so you're gonna blast it anyways. 
but the problem with it is that the enemy team has a lot of chance to react because it's not not you know immediate if they see you coming because they have vision somewhere they can flash away blink away react or whatever and a lot of champions have natural ways just to kind of do get out of it hell right here i'm just not going to talk about this little scene because you know they, my team is getting chased and murdered we kind of again overstayed our welcome but if you go back to that orgasmic scene you could see that the enemy team reacted to me, but they didn't have their means to escape or they just kind of got a little bit too, you know, like, I don't want to burn my things. And they got punished for that. They saw it coming when I was in the air and they just didn't bother reacting to it properly or fast enough. But that's sort of what I mean. It's not, that's one of his, Zach's actual big weaknesses. And here I jump in again because of the Yasuo. I thought maybe he'd be able to do something or not die immediately. I use my ultimate to escape even though I bring Gangplank with me. But Gangplank alone isn't going to finish me off. My only big threat right now is the Victor. The Vayne gets saved by the Tristana and the Nami. So, you know, betrayal by the ultimate whatever. And, you know, we end up scampering away as fast as we can. Right now... The, well, my team's biggest weakness is starting to rear its head. Our wave clear is really poor. Our team fight is ridiculously good, even with our, you know, damage being in just pure physical, right? Uh, if we can get them into a team fight where Vayne can run amok, they're just going to lose. But... When we get into siege scenarios, there's not much we can do. Vayne doesn't have the range to poke the tower. We don't have actual wave clear. And the enemy team has a lot of that in abundance. We're just kind of trying to force a fight, get a pick off, and then sort of brute force this. But at this point now, even me, I'm getting absolutely, you know, destroyed. So we can't do anything. And that's a big weakness of our team composition. And it's one of the things I really wanted to highlight. No matter how much of a glorious advantage we had, even look at even we though we have 15 kills on the vein, we can't really do a lot because our team composition isn't made to do this. We're trying to force fights, and technically I managed to do that here by grabbing the victim, pulling him out, and killing him. But then the rest of my team doesn't have the capacity to do anything with them while they're in that kind of safety behind that wall. So we're trying to force something, trying to let Vayne do things, but. We can't constantly protect her from the enemy team or from herself. So, yeah, here I jump back onto the enemy team just to make sure my teammates can hopefully survive. Though I thought maybe they'd turn around and finish at least somebody off. They, Tristana gives chase and gets absolutely giga wrecked by the vein. Though it became very close to, you know, being a disaster for us. At least in uh, chases and then gameplay teleports and then he guns her down. So, yeah. Thankfully, at the very least, since we took, you know, we, have, we took mid lane, they can't really push for anything. So we're, we have a lot of opportunities to try to squeak out something or get the Baron or control some, or, or control more of the map, starve them out, right? But no matter how far we get, it's not going to change the fact that we have that huge weakness and it's going to let them sort of start, you know, catching up to us. And like I said, Lee Sin's build, got to give him a lot of props. He knew If he knew what was going to happen, he prepared for this situation. Anyways, go in with Q, doesn't really do very much. A lot of spell, a lot of ultimates are wasted here from the enemy team. And we just kind of scamper off. Lee Sin comes in, we kind of, you know, just watch ourselves. My initiation here isn't going to be all that good, I believe. You know, Gangplank goes in, he takes quite a bit of damage, and then Tristana comes in, bothers me, and I, it gets completely stopped. I get my E back, and then I now I do go in, and the enemy team is sort of sandwiched in between me and the and the others, so I force them to just uh, you go, go back into the grinder that is Renekton, and they get absolutely destroyed. Tristana dies to fire. So, hooray for us. That was... That was a really bad team fight from both of us, but again, they did what they shouldn't do, fight in the corridor, put themselves in a sandwich, because their team needs to win by space. They need to control more space. My team wins by being clumped up. My team wins by sort of doing this kind of like, uh... Well, I, I forgot, I, don't, I can't, do, if only you could see my hands, I'd show you. This kind of movement where we split into two, two front line and then convoy, concave on one person, not a pincer, just sort of like, push them aside and then crush somebody and then finish off the other two. That's what my strategy was or at least. Either way, they go for the Elder. I can't, I actually managed to miss it by a little bit, but uh, we go in there and the enemy team, once again, split themselves up in a really bad situation. Like, gang, they leave Gangplank to die when they, at this point, they kind of should have fought it because they know if they lost this team fight, they were going to lose everything. Lee Sin, Gangplank get killed, Victor gets gunned down by the vein, and then the other two just kind of scamper off. Well, one dies and the other one scampers off. And that is the game. 
but holy Jesus, man, it was a tough one, a tough one game because we're not a good team composition. We kind of just got lucky that we were able to override our weakness by getting a really strong early game. And they can thank me for that. Hooray for Zach. Yeah. And remember, if you enjoyed the video, make a comment below in the comment section and also give the video a like. That helps the channel a lot more than you think.